it is our largest collider in the world. Behind me is a place that could be on the verge of solving one of the biggest mysteries in the universe. But let's talk about what the setup is, kind of what's going on. Essentially, what's happened is there's a lot of energy that has been hurled at the Earth from the Sun. Imagine if the magnets we use every day, like the ones on our refrigerators, could have just one pole instead of the usual north and south poles. If you tried to break a regular magnet in half, you'd end up with two smaller magnets, each with its own north and south pole. But scientists have been on a quest for more than a century to find something called magnetic monopoles, particles that have only one magnetic pole. Now, a recent study from the Atlas Collaboration at the Large Hadron Collider has put new limits on these elusive particles. This research provides valuable clues in the ongoing search for magnetic monopoles. So, has CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, managed to create something that defies the laws of traditional magnets? Let's dive into the details to find out. In 1931, physicist Paul Dirac made a significant discovery by demonstrating that the presence of magnetic monopoles would align with the principle of quantum mechanics and necessitate the quantization of electric charge. Fast forward to the 1970s, and magnetic monopoles gained renewed interest due to emerging theories aiming to unify all the fundamental forces of nature. This renewed enthusiasm led physicist Joseph Polzinski to assert that the existence of magnetic monopoles was a highly probable aspect of yet undiscovered physics. The idea is that magnetic monopoles might have been present in the early universe but became exceedingly rare due to their dispersion during the cosmic inflation phase which was an exponential expansion period in the early universe. Within the Atlas experiment, researchers are actively seeking pairs of point-like magnetic monopoles with masses of up to approximately 4 tera electron volts, TV. These pairs could potentially be generated during collisions between protons at energies of 13 TV. There are two primary mechanisms through which these monopoles may be produced, drill in where a virtual photon generated during proton collisions creates the magnetic monopoles, and photon fusion, in which two virtual photons emitted by the protons interact to give rise to the magnetic monopoles. However, during a research effort in July of the previous year at the Large Hadron Collider, scientists employed an exceptionally powerful magnetic field for their search, generated by the collision of two beams of lead particles at incredibly high velocities. This magnetic field reached an impressive measurement of about 10 to the 16 Tesla, rendering it approximately 2 billion times stronger than a typical refrigerator magnet and 100,000 times more potent than the magnetic field of a magnetar, an extremely magnetized neutron star. Despite conducting one of the most sensitive searches for magnetic monopoles at accelerators, the researchers involved in the study did not detect any magnetic monopoles. Nevertheless, their experiments did yield valuable results by establishing robust limitations on the mass of these particles. Specifically, they concluded that magnetic monopoles cannot have a mass less than 70 times that of a proton. Following these experiments, CERN made an intriguing announcement regarding a fracture in the Earth's magnetic field that remained open for approximately 14 hours. This announcement triggered speculations on social media platforms, with some suggesting that CERN was somehow opening a portal and allowing otherworldly entities to pass through. However, it's crucial to clarify that scientists later confirmed the existence of this opening in Earth's magnetic field, but emphasized that it posed no immediate threat to our planet. This opening did, however, permit the passage of intense solar winds, a phenomenon acknowledged by researchers. Earth's magnetic field, often taken for granted in everyday conversations, plays a pivotal role in safeguarding our planet. It not only ensures that our compasses consistently point north, but also serves as a protective shield, shielding us from the potentially damaging effects of solar winds that might otherwise harm our ozone layer. The formation of this crack in Earth's magnetic field was the result of a rare phenomenon known as a corrotating interaction region, CIR, originating from the Sun. Initially, SIRs are enormous plasma structures that develop when fast and slow-moving streams of solar wind collide in the heliosphere's lower and intermediate latitudes. The heliosphere encompasses the region around the Sun, including its solar magnetic field and solar winds. These SIRs can sometimes contain coronal mass ejections, CMEs, 
which are powerful bursts of solar material ejected from the sun and can lead to turbulent space weather and stunning auroras. On July 7, a CME embedded within the solar wind ahead of the CIR struck Earth's magnetic field, resulting in an extended G1 geomagnetic storm. While cracks in Earth's magnetic field are not uncommon, experts reassure us that there's no need for alarm because this magnetic field functions as a protective barrier shielding us from the effects of solar storms. These fissures typically open and close rapidly, but recent occurrences have shown that they can remain open for several hours. Furthermore, NASA has been closely monitoring an unusual anomaly in Earth's magnetic field that has caused a reduction in magnetic intensity, particularly in an area spanning South America and Southwest Africa. This phenomenon, known as the South Atlantic Anomaly, has perplexed scientists for years. While it may not have a direct impact on life on Earth, it poses a significant threat to spacecraft in Earth's orbit, which can be vulnerable to high-energy particles emitted by the Sun. The weakened magnetic field during these periods can lead to technical disruptions in these satellites, resulting in malfunctions and other complications. To compound these concerns, recent reports have highlighted increased solar activity, with 17 eruptions detected in a single area, two of which reached Earth at nearly 2 million miles per hour. This poses a genuine danger to communication networks and power grids, as demonstrated in early 2022 when SpaceX lost 40 satellites due to a geomagnetic storm. As astronomers and astronauts aboard the International Space Station, ISS, continue to study and monitor CMEs and solar flares, it is increasingly evident that precautions must be taken to protect our technology and avert potential disasters. Let's now explore another astonishing revelation that has emerged from the CERN facility. The latest news from CERN has the potential to revolutionize the scientific community and challenge the established laws of modern physics. Incredibly, subatomic neutrino particles may have traveled at a speed exceeding that of light within the confines of the 17-mile-long particle collider, a feat that was previously believed to be impossible. The caveat here is that nothing is supposed to surpass the speed of light. Albert Einstein, widely acknowledged as the father of modern physics, based his groundbreaking special theory of relativity on the fundamental principle that nothing can exceed the speed of light. But what if there's more to this story? Recent experiments conducted at CERN might hold the key to unveiling the mysteries of a reality more intricate than what Einstein envisioned. For over a century, Einstein's theories have paved the way for remarkable technological advancements. But what if these theories represent just the tip of the iceberg? Here enters quantum physics, the mind-boggling realm of subatomic particles, which has given rise to extraordinary concepts like wormholes, alternate dimensions, and the potential for time travel. It's a world beyond our wildest imagination, and CERN's ambitious research seeks to demonstrate that it may all be real. A decade ago, when scientists at CERN were colliding particles at extraordinary speeds, they were in pursuit of the Higgs boson, famously referred to as the God particle. This elusive particle is believed to be the tiniest constituent of matter. At that time, scientists hoped that discovering the Higgs boson would unlock the secrets of the strong force, an immensely powerful interaction that binds together particles of the same polarity, much like magnets that would ordinarily repel each other. However, recently, the brilliant minds at CERN achieved a remarkable feat by isolating antimatter for a continuous duration of 1,000 seconds. But their latest revelation has sent shockwaves through the scientific community for a profound reason, because it has the potential to revolutionize our understanding of technology and even the fundamental concept of time itself. You see, the theory of relativity, famously formulated by Albert Einstein, asserts that nothing can surpass the speed of light. But what if this long-held belief isn't entirely accurate? Researchers at CERN have conducted experiments that measured a neutrino beam traveling at a speed 60 nanoseconds faster than that of light, with an astonishingly small margin of error, just 10 nanoseconds. If this data is validated, it implies that we may have breached the previously insurmountable barrier of time travel, a notion once deemed impossible. Of course, these findings are still awaiting thorough peer evaluation to confirm their accuracy. However, if they indeed prove to be correct, it could mark one of the most momentous discoveries in the annals of scientific history. As CERN spokesman James Gillies succinctly expressed, 
The feeling that most people have is this can't be right, this can't be real. Chong Ki Young, a physicist who specializes in neutrinos at Stony Brook University in New York, has expressed some reservations regarding the recent discovery of particles apparently traveling faster than the speed of light. Young, who also served as the UDADES spokesperson for a similar experiment conducted in Japan, highlights the critical importance of precise timing in these experiments. He points out that the Global Positioning System, GPS, used to measure the neutrino's journey can introduce a margin of error of several tens of nanoseconds. While he doesn't outright dismiss the findings from CERN, Jung suggests that there might be an unidentified systematic error in the measurements. Dr. Alan Kostelecki, a theoretical physicist with a quarter century of experience working on the Standard Model Extension, which explores potential violations of special relativity in particle physics, shares a similar perspective. He cautions that while previous measurements have set limits on what neutrinos can do, nothing has definitively ruled out the possibility of faster-than-light travel. Kostelecki underscores the principle that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Until these findings are independently verified, he maintains a cautiously optimistic stance. What are your thoughts on this matter? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more captivating content. Thank you for tuning in.